You drew two cards, huh? Mm, yeah, that's right. Huh. I'll see you raise your ten. Up to you, Charlie. And up another 50. And 50 more. Show it down, gentlemen. What, what are you, practicing to be a, a burglar, betting that kind of money on a two-card draw? My hot streak got you a little nervous, huh? Mm -hmm, yes. Forget it. Oh, you're going to quit with all that money in your pocket? No, and it's going to stay in my pocket the way your luck's been running. Well, Mr. Beggs, just two of us left. What's your pleasure? See you and raise you one thousand dollars. <laughs> What's this? You know the Lost Creek mine in Stamp Mill? Uh, what I hear that mine played out a long time ago. Well, it is, but the Stamp Mill's still in good shape, or will be as soon as Ludwig finishes the repair job. What you've got in your hand is the Stamp Mill, and it's worth a sight more than a thousand dollars. Doesn't take much of a Stamp Mill to be worth a thousand dollars. It's a fair bet, then? Mm-hmm. Mr. Beggs, do us both a favor and put this back in your pocket. Either see it or throw in your cards. Well, I've only got about $500. You give me that 500 in your pocket, I could call him. <laughs> Uh, you want me to loan you the $500 I got for my horses, the money I'm going to put in the bank? Loan me nothing. I want you to buy half my bet, and then when I win the mine, we'll be in business. We'll be partners. You're going to win the mine, we'll be partners. What makes you think you got them beat? This. <laughs> and queens. Queen high, straight flush. Well, partner, we're in business. <laughs> oh, but by the way, what do you, uh, what do you know about stamp mills? About what? That's what I thought. I have a feeling I'm going to wake up tomorrow morning regretting this. Our mill. You know, it looks pretty good from here, yeah. partner. First thing we got to do is get a crew of men, about 20 or 30. Well, what for? To work on these roads, get them in top shape. Oh, but what's our hurry? Well, once we get the mill running, we'll have ore wagons coming in here from all directions, day and night. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Let's get the mill started, and then we'll take care of the roads, huh? Well, yeah, that's what I meant.
came to help. Why don't you come sooner? Good old Ludwig got a disposition like a bear with a thorn in his paw. Hey, who we got out there? How should I know? Somebody don't like stamp mills, I guess. Shoot! Those men tried to blow up my mill. Uh, Simmer now, we Ludwig, they're gone. Get so excited you blow yourself up. Uh, come, let me repay you with a little schnapps. Sounds good. Right here. Uh, partner, I think we've uh, inherited a lot of lumber and machinery here. Huh? Yeah, we sure have. Yeah, you want us a mill, all we gotta do now is win the war. Huh? Good friends. Yeah. For what you did, thank you. Uh, hey, Ludwig, who do you think's trying to blow this place up? Huh? <laughs> I can guess. Miles Renfro. He's tried it before. Miles Renfro, he owns uh, a couple of stamp mills, doesn't he? Three mills on the Carson River. A nice man he seems to be, but he's not. Now, we're gonna give him a little competition now. See, Candy and I just won this place in a poker game. Queen High Straight Flush. Who from? Biggs. Jason Biggs. Jason Biggs. He owns only 40%. What? 40%? But who owns the rest? A woman named Kelly. She inherited her shares from her father. Congratulations, partner. You just won yourself half of 40% of a war. Well, 40% is better than nothing. We'll just get the place in shape, that's all. We gotta find her other partner first. Oh, she will be here soon. She will sell you her stock or put up her shares of the expenses. Either way, the mill runs. It makes it sound so easy. Now I know it is Miles Renfro. He held you one Bex shares in a poker game. Oh, there's Grace. Perfect. Pain. Can we prove it's Renfro? Rope. Prove? Yeah. Huh. How? Renfrew hires men from other places to do his dirty work. These men, they don't talk. Nice man. A few things I need, just to get started. Why well, no, we better go back to that poker game. What for? We gotta win ourselves a hardware store. We better get these things ordered. Yeah. You take the big one, I'll take the little one. Hey, come on, leave the lady alone, will you? Go find your own girl, buddy. You're not the sheriff. I'm not the sheriff. No, you're not the sheriff. Well, ma'am, I'm Joe Cartwright. Uh, my name's Candidate. My friends call me Candy. Hello. Hey, 
let me take that for you. Is your friend all right? Oh, yeah, he's fine. Fine, don't worry about him. Oh, how can I ever thank you? Uh, my pleasure. I'm wondering, is it always so exciting here in Virginia City? Well, not always. No, no, no. Sometimes whole weeks go by and hardly anything happens at all. <laughs> You're dripping on the lady. Uh, we help carry your bag? You're so kind. Good idea. The hotel's right down here. Oh, there's, uh, there's another bag there. You be here long, Miss, uh, uh... Kelly. Katie Kelly. Katie Kelly? Yes. Uh, uh, you wouldn't by any chance be interested in stamp mills. Well, just one. The Lost Creek stamp mill. May I meet your new partners? Me too. Uh, I'm delighted. So am I. Shall we go? Yes. You three are going to run the Lost Creek stamp mill, huh? Yeah, that's right. We already started. We took a load of hardware out there this afternoon. Yeah, when we uh, took Miss Kelly out to see the mill. Had you ever seen a stamp mill before? No, I never had. It was really exciting. Just exactly what do you two know about ore processing? Well, Ludwig's going to show us how. Oh. Ludwig. Made some coffee, Paul. Yeah, thank you. I think I need something a little stronger. Well, I can fix that, too. Thanks, so. Yes, thank you. Well, before you go into business, you ought to know what the market is and who the competition is. Now, the large mines process their own ore. Small mines can't afford to, so they have somebody else do it for them. Well, right. Well, that's where we come in, huh? Well, a lot of other people have had the same idea. That's why there have been a number of mills built to handle the ore put out by the small mines. And today, all but the Lost Creek Mill are owned by one man. The Miles Renfro. That's right. Now, do you really believe that you have the resources, the ability, the know-how to compete with him? And Miss Kelly, your father was the majority stockholder in the Lost Creek Mill. Now, you know the history of that operation better than I do. Well, if you mean the uh, dynamiting and accidents, yes, I do. The mine was finally bombed right out of business. Yeah, I'll get it. I'm uh, Miles Renfro. This is my superintendent, Sam Jacks. Wonder if I could come in for a minute. Come right in. Miss Kelly. Gentlemen. I hear you two lads are pretty good poker players. I am. I'm here to make a firm offer on the Lost Creek stamp mill. I'll give you three times what you invested in that poker game. They're not interested. Well, that's a handsome profit on a one-day investment. Hmm. Yeah, it sure is. I'm still not interested. Well, how about you, Miss Kelly? You own more of them than they do. I wouldn't sell to you for any price. Well, I uh, hate to see young people go broke. Lost Creek's a hard luck operation, has been from the start. I know why the Lost Creek has been a hard luck operation. And why Mr. Beggs just quit and let the mill sit there. You see, Papa was too sick to run the mill himself. So Mr. Beggs ran it for him. Mr. Renfro tried to buy Mr. Beggs out. But of course he wouldn't sell. That's when the um, accident started. Now, wait a minute, Miss Kelly. There was a dynamite bomb that went off and just completely wrecked the engine room. After that, Mr. Bakes found dynamite under his bed, in his boots, even in his lunch bucket. Are you suggesting that I'm responsible? I know you are. Papa told me so. Well, you'd better not repeat that, not unless you want to be sued for slander. I wouldn't mind. Might even be fun. Well, uh, thank you kindly for your hospitality. Nice neighbor. I wonder why Beggs had quit. Didn't know till now. All right. You want to run that stamp mill? You go right ahead. Oh, you better take some Ponderosa hands with you, Stan Garth. No, no, we'll, we'll be all right. You sure? Yeah. Well, there's something else. Have you thought about where you're going to get the ore to process? Ore? Uh, well, no, not exactly. Yeah, but, uh, no, we, we, we're just going to get to that right now. We're, uh, we're going to go in town and get started. We'll drop Miss Kelly off at the, at the hotel. 
Good thinking, New York. Did you hear what I hear? Bring me that brandy. <laughs> Gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed your dinner. Let's have a little more champagne while we talk business. Now, when I found out there was an association of independent mine owners, I wanted to get you together because I knew you'd want to hear what I have to say. Get it said. All right, Mr. Stone. Well, the way I understand it, you take your ore to one of Mr. Renfro's mills. You pay what he asks to have it processed, or you don't get it processed. Is that right? That's right. Well, we intend to change all that. In what way, Mr. Cartwright? So we're going to put the Lost Creek stamp mill back into operation. We're going to process your ore cheaper and faster than Renfro ever did. How much cheaper? 10% to start. Maybe more if we can manage it. Well, now, you're kind of asking us to jump before we have a place to land, aren't you? And how do we know you're going to get it started? We'll give you our word. Well, operating the mill is a lot tougher than that. It takes a lot of experience and know-how. You bet it does. Well, I better be getting back to the mine. Look, all we want to know is do you want to have your ore process 10% cheaper? Look, I can't speak for all the miners, but uh, as president of the association, I think I can speak for those that are here. See, we have a contract with Mr. Renfro. Now, if we make a written or a verbal agreement with you and then you don't open that mill, why, Renfro's liable to raise his prices. Um. When does this contract expire, Mr. Peterson? Eleven days. Look, I'll tell you what, if you're operating by then, why, get in touch with us. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Thank you. 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 Got one thing done. Yeah, I'm saying. We spent fifty-six dollars. Plus tip. Fine clothes. Thank you, thank you. Really, really. <laughs> What's so funny? Now, nothing is it. That lilac water smells so pretty. So pretty. Oh. Keep it up, buddy. We're gonna have a bigger go around you had in the street yesterday. Mm -hmm. Hey. You know, th th there's something I've always wanted. That, that San Francisco dude look. Really sets a man apart. Keep it up. Keep it up. No, I'm serious. I, I like them garters. They hold up my sleeves. Hey, yeah. Uh, there's something I want to talk to you about. Since we're only growling at each other anyway, I just want to bring it right on out in the open. Mm -hmm. We can go right here and talk, partner. We're taking Katie to dinner, right? Both of us? That's uh, right. Um, what about after? Uh, after what? After dinner. I've rented a buggy and I'm going to take Katie for a ride, and I don't think we need you along. <laughs> you know, that's remarkable. Hmm. That's almost word for word what I was going to tell you. Really? Yeah. Well, she actually, Katie wants to go on that buggy ride with me. Will she tell you that? No, not, not in so many words, but a, a woman has a way of uh, looking at a man that just tells you everything you have to know. Oh, she looks at you that way, huh? Exactly. Exactly. Just like lightning. When it happens, it happens. I guess I'm out of luck. I don't suppose there's anything I could do to change it, huh? No, nope, not a thing. I probably should have told you before, save you all that money you spent on them new clothes. Well, thank you, buddy. Well, you know what they say. Lucky in cards, unlucky in love. I don't know who said it, but he knew what he was talking about. Of course, there's a lot of their fish in this. Hey!
secluded, isn't it? I thought this would be a good place to talk. And maybe... Yes, uh... Mr. Kennedy. Will you stop calling me Mr.? I told Joe the way it was with you and me. I told him. Is Joe. Oh, easy, you with a buggy and a pretty girl. I just looked the same place I've always looked before and found you. If you'll excuse us for, for just a minute, I uh, I want to talk some business with my partner. Just just take a minute. I'll bring him right back. Excuse me. Having a good time out here, huh? Yeah. Why, you know, I sure am glad you're taking it this way, Joe. You know, you're a good sport. Ah, look, it's at least a falcon, too, you know. <laughs> How did you get out of the room? Out of the room, you're not gonna believe it. <laughs> I took the door now, Bob. <laughs> Kenny decided to take a walk. Boy loves long walks. He's kind of a nature lover at heart. I, I told him I'd take you back. But how nice. That's right. Oh, this is sad. It's, uh, it's kind of a pretty spot, I... I like it here. It's very nice, Mr. Conkrum. Hey, now look. Why don't you stop calling me Mr. All right. Jill? No, yeah, that's better. Drop in and see how you fellas getting along. Yeah, we're getting along just fine. Yeah, we'll meet Peterson's deadline with no trouble at all. That a fact. You know, in Virginia City, the odds are three to one, you won't make it. Because both of you will be fighting over that Kelly gal. We wouldn't let anything like a lady get in the way of our friendship. Yeah, uh, not for a minute. I'm hearing, but I ain't believing. Listen, Paul's gonna send some extra men over to Hefty Guard. Yeah, what for? We don't need any help. Yeah, maybe not, but he's concerned about the miners that had to overpay Renfro. He wants to protect their interest, you know. Good enough. See you. I'll take you now. No finger again. Don't just stand there. Do something. Huh? I'm beginning to wonder who owns this mill. <laughs> I dream of Katie with a long blonde hair. La -da -da. I uh, left work kind of early, didn't you? Uh, well, I had some uh, business in town. Oh. Uh, Katie tells me you're going to take her buggy ride. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, she expressed the desire to spend a little time alone with me. Oh, did she tell you that? Well, not in so many words, but uh, there's a look a woman gives a man. You know? Yeah, I know. All right, good time. Thank you, partner. <laughs> I dream of Katie with the long blonde hair. La 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 la
Katie, I've been thinking. You have? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was thinking when we get the mill started, why don't, uh, why don't you and I take a little trip to San Francisco? Oh, I'd love to go to San Francisco. I've never been there before. Oh, you'd love it. It's a great town. I know all the best places to take you. I'm just the one to show you. I'm sure. And it's all settled. Well, not quite. I'm well, not quite, why not? Because I'd like to know just a little bit more about our trip. Oh, about this trip? Well, uh, we take the stage to Sacramento and uh, take the boat to San Francisco. Yes. And then what? Then we get a couple of rooms in the finest hotel. Yes. And then? Uh, then we, uh, well, then we'll have some dinner, champagne, a little pate de foie gras. And then? Yeah, and then, uh, Relax and enjoy ourselves. Joe, would we see anybody? See anybody? No. Anyone official. O official? Mm. <clears throat> Why, uh, on a on a trip like that, I, I really don't think we should see anybody. I understand. Good. And then it's all settled. Let me think about it. Call it quits for today. Where are you going? Well, I got a got a date. I want to get into the hotel, clean up a little bit. Oh, have a good time, partner. Oh yeah, I uh, I'll do that. Coming, partner. Coming, coming, coming. Take it easy, will you? Take it easy. I haven't opened in a minute. I've been thinking. How would you like to take a trip to Denver? I'd love to go to Denver. I've never been there before. Oh, it's a great place. I'd, uh, I'd show you a real good time. You would be going too? Well, well, yeah, that was the idea. Sounds interesting. What all do you have in mind? B uh, well, uh, for starters, we'd... Uh... Put up at the finest hotel. Yeah, with the finest. Have champagne, pâté de foie gras. Well, yeah, sure. And afterwards, we'd just sort of relax and enjoy ourselves. Oh, absolutely. Candy. Hmm? Would we, at any time, see anybody official? Oh, a trip like this? I should say not. I didn't think so. Is it a deal? Let me think about it. You tell your pa there's absolutely nothing to worry about, and you come back and see me Tuesday. Goodbye. Goodbye. I've never seen anything like it in my life. Like what? Like little Joe and Candy. They fight over that girl. They beat on each other until the dog tired. Then they go out that stamp mill and work like nothing ever happened. Will they have it running on time? The way they're going, they will. Stop them. They got a 24-hour armed guard out there now. It won't be easy. Easy or not, get it done. I'll try Riley enough Indian to get in close, and he's the best man I know with dynamite.
happen anymore. <laughs> it's the day we've been looking for, eh, Ludwig? Yeah, this is the day. <laughs> Finally got the meal ready to operate. Well, just as good as. A few more little things will be done tomorrow. Oh, yeah, we're way ahead of the deadline, Peterson said. Way ahead. Oh, great. I propose a toast to success. 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 Mm. You and Candy have turned over a new leaf, I think, huh? What do you mean? Well, you haven't had a fight in at least two hours. <laughs> no, that we took a day off. In your honor, and to celebrate finishing the mill. Uh, besides, I was so far ahead, I decided to take a vacation. Why don't you give us a real break and take a vacation, leave the lady and I alone for a while? Oh, would you like to discuss a little um, further, Brad? I think it's just about time for some fried chicken, huh? We have chicken first. There you go. Yes, ma'am. Some in my room. Oh, thank you, Lily. Well, we're gonna bring Peterson out here, Martin. Let him take a look at the place, huh? Oh, yeah. One looks all I need to be begging to sign on the dotted line. so tight. Oh, the doctor said it had to be tight in order for it to heal. Hearing it is not four days now, and it hurts more. The doctor said it would. How's the patient doing? He's cranky, but improving. You hurting a lot, buddy? <laughs> a little. And the work? How's it going? Come along fine. We got things pretty well put together. Well, do you think you'll be able to make the repairs in time? There's only two days left. Yeah, I think we can. The only thing we're having trouble with is this old broken cogwheel. This, this you cannot fix. Well, is there any way we can run the mill without it? No. Can't fix it, we'll buy a new one. Yes, you can buy a new one in Philadelphia. Philadelphia? Yes. Monarch Foundry in Philadelphia is the only place that part is made. And that'll take a month to get here. We're out of business, partner. No, not yet. No, we can't fix it and we can't buy one, so we'll, uh, we'll make a new one. Make one of these? How? It's cast iron. We'll use a foundry. Aren't you forgetting that Renfro has the only working foundry in this town? I don't think he's going to help us. We'll use Hanson's foundry. Hanson's foundry's been closed for over a year, Joe. So we'll open it. <laughs> we don't know anything about casting iron. But I know a man who does. Tell us what to do, Mr. Carwright, and we'll do it. Joseph, you ever made a coke fire? Hmm? No, sir, I have. Well, you're going to make one before the day is older. 
Uh, Hanson said there was some coke and pig iron. Back of this place was out there. Joe, you and Candy bring some dinner. Right. Yeah. Better bring in that broken casting that we'll use as a pattern. Sure, hope we can find a flask. Flask? Not your kind of flask. You know, the kind of hold the wet sand we'll use as a form. I think we're in luck. Yeah, but the right size, too. And all Riley could do with his dynamite was break one casting? He did more than that. He busted up the mill and he busted up Ludwig. But little Joe and Candy have got the mill put back together again. All except that casting. What about Ludwig? He's not hurt so bad he can't tell little Joe and Candy what to do. And they doubled the guards at the mill. Three Ponderosa hands packing shotgun around the clock. Cartwrights can't make that casting before the mine owner's contract runs out. Can they? Common sense says they can't, but the cart rises don't seem to operate on common sense. Well, then we'd better be on the safe side. I want you to get me a couple of men that are handy with guns. You going against cart rights? Yes, I'm going to make sure that the Lost Creek stamp mill never opens for business. Keep that furnace hot, just in case. What do you mean? There could be something wrong with this one? A very good chance. Good morning, Miss Kelly. I've been waiting for you. Why, Mr. Peterson, whatever for? Uh, to, uh, to talk a little business. Oh, what kind of business? Uh, well, you, you are the major stockholder in the Lost Creek Mill, so... Yes, I am. Um, why don't we talk at lunch? I'd, uh, be honored to have you as my guest. Well, I'd like that very much. We don't have time. We've got all night. Keep those bottles going. Hoss, let's pour another four. Thank you. It was very nice. Yeah, it was. Five minutes. <laughs> Should have 
It doesn't take much to spoil one of those things, does it? All of you, get them up. You too. On your feet. Well, I didn't think we'd meet again so soon, Mr. Cartwright. You're not going to use those guns on Virginia City. Well, not unless you force us to in order to protect my property. I'm here to evict trespassers. Mr. Hansen needed money. I needed another foundry. So I bought this one. Lock, stock, and sand on the floor. You didn't buy that cogwheel. That's right, I didn't. Oh, we'll take that with us, will Of they? course, but in the same shape it was in when you brought it in here. Mr. Jax, if you'll uh, take care of that. Well, Mr. Andrew, glad to. That'll do nicely. Good poker players ought to know when to cash in their chips. You should have sold when I was uh, ready to buy. Now all you can do is pick up the pieces and get out of here. Yeah, well, I uh, guess we know when we're late. That's very wise, Mr. Cartwright. You not only respect law and order, you know when to throw your hand in. Boys, I, uh, I suggest we get all our things together and take everything that belongs to us. Easy now. You'll pay for this, Cartwright. I'll have you all up for assault and battery. I'll have you in court. You do that, Mr. Renfro. You'll be the laughing stock of Virginia City. Now, there's the door. Get out. Swiss watch. Oh, congratulations, gentlemen. You know Mr. Peterson. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, sure. Hi. It's uh, nice to see you here. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We've been um, discussing the stamp mill. Oh, <laughs> stamp mill. That's our partner, huh? Well, I guess you're ready to sign a few contracts with us, then, huh? No, but I, uh, I am ready to offer you a very profitable uh, deal. A deal? Yeah, you see, the mine owners are very anxious to have Lost Creek in operation to prevent Renfro from continuing his monopoly. So, yeah. but they uh, they seem to feel you're better cattlemen than uh, mill operators. <laughs> yeah, I seem to remember somebody saying that. A fellow named Ben Cartwright. Yeah, nice man. <laughs> so the mine owners are willing to buy your stock at a handsome profit for you, and then uh, have Ludwig and some others run it. Uh, what about Katie's stock? Well, Miss uh, Miss Kelly's already sold her stock to the association. So. Uh, you might as well sell yours. Uh, you'd have little or nothing to say about it, being minority holders. <laughs> uh, you mind if we talk this over for a minute? No. Well, I, I don't mind selling my stock at a nice profit. I'd much prefer to be a cattleman. But I think you could have had the courtesy to, to come to us and, and tell us first. We're your partners, your friends. Yeah, well, we were friends. That's all you were. Yeah, we're good friends. I mean, I'm going to take you to San Francisco. Oh, oh no, wait a minute. She was going with me to, to uh, Denver. Well, I think you ought to let the lady decide. I think San Francisco would be the town. Well, I think you're you both her. wrong. I'm going to Sacramento with Mr. Peterson. Um, with uh, uh, Peterson? On our 
honeymoon. Honeymoon? Neither of you suggested it, but Ivar has asked me to be his wife. We're being married the first of the month. I don't suppose there's any use in me trying to talk to you and let me handle it, huh? Yeah, no, I, I don't suppose you. Well, this time you take the big one and I'll take the little one. Yeah, and the one who finishes first. Yeah, right. right. Now, Mr. Pearson, that uh, stock deal will be just fine. Right. Sign the papers tomorrow. Right. Oh. Good time, Sacramento. Thank you. Stranger. This is Ponderosa land. That makes you the stranger, doesn't it? No, that's Cartwright land. Now, just who might you be? I'm Joe Cartwright. Riding out this way looking for strays. Well, you found one. I'm obliged to you for a bed down, a mess of beans, and the use of your coffee pot. Uh, you're welcome to it if, uh, if that's all you're after. That's all I need. This here air, that there sun making a blue shadow mystery of what's over the next rise. Hey, that's a mighty fine piece of horse you got there. Thank you. Lean in the withers. Chest like a big stave oak barrel. I had one just like it. Till he, uh, give up his life saving me in an old Comanche raid outside of Miss Tizo. Yeah, those fine folk uh, over there gave me this here old watch for services rendered that day. That's a good looking watch. Man can't ride a watch. Where's your horse? Found it back a ways. Crowbait. Not like this one. Oh, I sure do miss that other fellow. One man horse. Nobody could ride him but me. Same with this one. Oh, I never seen a horse I couldn't ride. Yeah, well, you're looking at one now, mister. Let's see. Hey, wait a minute. This horse can make that ridge in 10 seconds flat from a standard start. Yeah, well, sure, he's fast enough. That watch of mine's got a second hand on it. Look, that's, that's my horse you're sitting on, mister. Oh, you're a fine-looking specimen. I trust you with my watch and my rifle. All right, you're on. Get ready. Go!
<laughs> More! You had enough. Never get enough of you, play pretty. Now bring it over. Now. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's it. Now, that ain't social you run up from me. Sit. Let me be. I ain't such a much. Let me be. You all I got play pretty. Now, be nice and do what you got hired to do. Sit. My guess that pretty little girl already done what she gets paid for. Back off, mister. She's my play. I'm the original ringtail roar. More like a ringtail baboon, I'd say. Did he pay for that 40 rod? No. Now, ain't that forgetful? Now, give him his gun. He'll use it. Well, I guess a man has to make these life and death decisions every day. Now, go on, give it to him. Now, get out of here. obliged. What for? Man needs a bit of muscle stretching after a long day's ride in the saddle. I never had no men fighting over me before. Why not? Well, truly, I ain't such a much. No, that's a terrible thing to say about one of my friends, especially if she reminds me of Snowflower. Snowflower? Indian princess, daughter of Chief Thundercloud. I met her when I was scouting for General Crook. She made a fine bride, till she got killed. Oh, I'm sorry. Don't be. She died proud and happy, fighting alongside her daddy. My daddy wasn't no chief. He just fought being poor, never had no shoes even. Cut me a five-toed track to church every Sunday, I did. I bet you walked real proud. Just resentful. My old daddy had them dreams. We all gotta have them dreams, gal. Never come true. Bought herself a piece of bottom land and the river came and washed it away. Homestead some rich prairie. Drought come and that old homestead just, just went. Guess he died reaching for a fistful of air. He had you. It was riches enough. <laughs> no, it didn't. I run away. Heading for San Francisco, I got as far as here and I went bust. And that's why you're working here. Working and waiting. My daddy won 500 in a poker game before some tin horn cashed him in for good. But it's coming here at the Virginia City Bank. Now, ain't that a rainbow wish come true? Yeah. Well, I got important business waiting. Gonna be the end of my rainbow, too. That's nice. Are you all put together? You'll come back. Me too. All you gotta do is holler Baudry come running. That's a nice looking horse you got there. It's tolerable. He'll do to the next one. Are you, uh, you plan to get the next one the same way you got this one? I don't follow your friend. <laughs> you don't follow me, huh? <laughs> of course you don't. I follow you. Right down there to the sheriff's office.
Audrey? Audrey. Ben Cartwright! Audrey. <laughs> <laughs> you son of a gun, I thought they'd hung you up years ago. Ben Cartwright, you are a sight for saddle sore eyeballs. You know him. Know him? Yes, we know each other. We uh, had some dealings here and there. Hey, Ben, the gospel, Ben. <laughs> you old tiger, you. You remember the time you were standing up a whole battalion of Santa Anna's best? Oh. <laughs> Just to kiss that slow-eyed senorita goodbye? <laughs> <laughs> long time ago, boy, long time ago. Long, long road. Yeah. Say, which one was she now? Teresina or, or Margarita? Oh, come on. <laughs> oh, this is a little bit of your past you ain't got around to tell us about, ain't it? Oh, Ben here never was much for talking. Just doing. And if this here young bull's your son, you did all right. Yeah. Uh, ask him about your other son. He came in riding Joe's horse. Nobody ever tell you? It ain't polite to interrupt when men are talking? Here's your gun, boy. Now, this here Tad's under the impression that uh, I stole that old hay burner. Yeah, but wait for you to tell me how you came by him. Well, your son uh, told me his name. I saw your brand on, uh, on his horse. And I just couldn't resist having a little fun. So I boxed him. How'd you ride him? And better than that, how'd you get him away from little Joe? Yeah, I think I know how. You pulled that old watch trick on him, didn't you? Yes, sir, I sure did. Just like Stephen Rhea did before he got himself hung. Ben, um, what do you say we sweep from the hinges of our tonsils over the saloon? Oh, there's plenty of time for that once we get to the Ponderosa. Oh, come on, Ben. Oh, she'd take that wagon and uh, Candy, see if you can find little Joe, give him a ride home. Bo and I got a lot of talking to do. Come on. Be having supper for some time yet. Could you use a sandwich? Well, I just might. Good. How many? One. Good. If you split the loaf down the long way. I sure did a terrible thing to you. What do you mean, a guest? Well, this is old Baudry. Come on. Come on, get up. <laughs> hey, well, well, old Baudry stole my horse. I've been walking for two and a half hours. I got blistered feet. Yes, I Not bad. <laughs> right in the button. Look, this is Baudry. This is the youngest, the pride and joy. Joseph, this is old Bo. Shake hands. Come on. How do you do? Oh. <laughs> I heard that he uh, pulled the old watch trick on you. Yeah, it was real funny. Real funny. <laughs> of course, I, uh... I threw in a bit of schooling in the bargain, seeing he was the son of my old compadre. Yeah, schooling? What do you mean, schooling? Well, now you know, never face down a stranger with both your hands so bizified, you're at the mercy. <laughs> <laughs> Here, come on. Get upstairs and soak your feet. Yeah, let me go get upstairs and soak my head. <laughs> Here, if you're watch, if you don't mind, I'll take my horse back. He's a good horse. <laughs> <laughs> oh. He, uh, he hits pretty good, Ben. Yeah? Yeah, he's, uh, he's all right. One of the best. What about you? You still hitting pretty good, too? Or are you still that yonder man looking for what's beyond that next rise? Nope. I'm going to settle down and build me a spread, like you did, Ben. You're not. You're not going to tie down. Why not? You did. Why not me? Oh, you'd find it too dull. Last time I heard you were drifting cattle across the Rio Grande to the Bandidos. Gorillas, Ben. One man's hero is another man's traitor. Oh, I might have been on a few Texas one posters, all right. But south of that river, 
I was a real caballero. You write up that cut to Miraflores. Don't be surprised to find a big statue of Baudry gracing the town square. Ha! <laughs> I'm going to tell you something, Baudry. Nothing about Baudry would ever surprise me. <laughs> okay. I'm going to get those sandwiches. <laughs> Buenos días, señor. Howdy. There's water in the bucket. Step down, take a drink. I think I will. Many tracks for such a lonely place, huh? Quite a few. Before I came, a man walked to this cabin. One road. Then one rides away, and the other one walks. But the man who walked away is not the one who walked here. You read track pretty good. Oh, something to do. You know. A man that interested in tracking is usually looking for somebody. Isn't somebody always looking for somebody? Well, there is a man I would like to see. He comes this way from Chris Montana. He's a big man. Stands tall, much hombre. Have you seen a man like this on the trail? The man you're looking for is, uh, is he on the run? From who? From you, maybe. From me? <laughs> uh, <laughs> if he comes from the north and I come from the south, how could he be on the run from me? Hmm? It's a good question. You know, I think this friend of mine, uh, he went to Virginia City. I've never been there. I think I will go there myself. Fine. Would you close the door when you leave? Hey. You never took your drink of water. You said I wasn't thirsty. <laughs> Adios. Hasta la vega. Yes, sir, a hawk in the sky, a big horned goat, jumping from peak to peak like there was little clumps of clay. Yes, Ben, that was me. Oh, Ben, the world squeezing down like, like some little tad's leaking balloon. Every man's entitled to at least one crack at a big dream. You had yours and you made it work. Well, sweat made it work, Bo. That and the need to settle down. Sure. Ponderosa for you and Miraflores for me. Mexico? No, I got the beginnings right here, Ben. I know $500 ain't much, but maybe it's enough for a down payment. You got the kind of bees I need, Ben. Now, I know under ordinary circumstances, it, it ain't much, but you and me, Ben. Yeah, well, uh, Baudry, you sure that's what you want? I changed, Ben, believe me. I'm not asking to use you. I'm asking you to invest. Miraflores, huh? Mr. Curry, I went all the way out to the cabin. I didn't see any sign of Joe. Oh! <laughs> yeah, well, he, uh, he found his way here. <laughs> he walked all the way. He's upstairs soaking his feet right now. Just so he got here, all right. Yeah. Mr. Baudry, I ran into a man I think is looking for you. He's a Mexican, he's a big man. Very dark, soft-spoken. Do you know him? No, 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 I don't, Caddy. No. Well, I, uh, I got some miles of fence to ride. I'll get to it. Fine, thank you, Candy. Yeah. So, Miraflores, huh? 
And I'm not going to let you jump, Ben. You think about it for a few days. Well, I don't see how I'm going to be able to turn my back on you. Just the same. You think about it. Now, there's a certain little lady at the Silver Dollar that I think I'll have a few words with. All right? <laughs> hey, uh, you're not going to walk all the way to Virginia City. And there's a bay in the barn. Help yourself. Thank you, Ben. All right. I got your message, and I and thought And you came and running to help me trail the boldry herd back down. <laughs> oh, amigo, I wish it were true. I really do wish it were true. Why? If you go back to Miraflores now, the orders are to kill you. What are you talking about, kill me? Everything passes, hombre. Things change. What's changed? Cardona. Cardona? How? I stole that white horse he rides. But that's in the past. We were heroes, yes. But now Cardona sits fat in a white suit in the palace of the Gobernador. And he wants no part of the old past. And what about the rest of them? The ones who put him there? But you've got to understand, man. You win the throne of the Gobernador. And power makes enemies out of old friends. Cabeza de Vaca is dead. Cholo's on the run, still in the revolutionary profession. And do you know who he has to fight? Cardona. And you, Mitar? A oh, man gets old. He has to go where the grub is. Adios, viejo. Podre, amigo. I run the rurales for Cardona now. End of a dream. Don't make it into a nightmare. In the name of the old past, don't make me responsible for your hanging. Original Lone Wolf from Bitter Creek, and it's my night to howl. <laughs> Maybe you had enough. I sure have, up to here. Hey, ain't there no action in this here town? Oh, you sure ready to fight the bear. Yeah. It don't it show, eh? Who had the wild grizzly screams with scare when I crawl into his den. <laughs> Time you settle down. Yeah. Yeah. Near Flores. Now, oh, there's a the place. Yeah, you got me a war bag full of dreams. Swing it on it. Wild running deer. Cold stream full of trout. Green grass so tender a man could eat. You been there? No. But I've been in all them saloons trying to get my daddy out before somebody really believed he was the original wild man from Bodie. Man's world. You need somebody to protect you. Get down by all right. Come on, O'Connor. Not from you. From her. 
Look, I don't want trouble. Then you tell her to serve me. The trouble is, old Ben won't give me no breeding cattle if there ain't no mere flores. You earned your pay, play pretty. I don't hear a thing. But I sure do smell something awful bad. You boys are lazy white hands, ain't you? Yeah, all but him. Three of them. And he was doing fine until the roof fell on him. Well, you're going to be late getting back. Because you're going to jail for a spell. Him too? Him too. Come on, let's pick him up and go. Get them all out of here, Cheryl. Get them out Come of on, here. Come on, boys, move. Rosie, I'm there. That's why I'm in this here iron hotel. What are you doing here? Sheriff let me in. After the lazy wife foreman paid damages to get his hands loose. How you feel, Bo? <laughs> oh. Oh, uh. How long have I been out? This ain't no place for the likes of you. That same thought just come to me, too. It's like caging a big old eagle. What's that? Five hundred dollars. I got my inheritance. You'll probably have to pay something to get out of here. <laughs> That's your getaway money, gal. If I take that, what are you, how are you going to make San Francisco? I'm a yonder man, Noreen. The way I move. I might not be coming back for some time. Please, take my money. That won't be necessary. No, sir, not while I got my own 500. Oh, you're going to need that 500 to pay me for those beeves I'm selling you. Well, what about the damages? The Lazy R's ramrod said that his men admitted they were in the wrong, so uh, they're going to stand the damages. You're in the clear. Get your hat. Well, what about her? Oh, stagecoach leaves in two days. I got my job till then. You ain't got the talent for that kind of job, Noreen. Ben, she's a milksop calf. A bow, natural born target for every hog leg buster in the territory. Well, Noreen, uh, you can come out to the ranch and stay there till you're ready to leave for San Francisco if you want to. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go. <laughs> the land we rode over, up there, to the mountains and beyond, Ponderosa land. Yes, sir, old Ben Cartwright sure did build his other spread. Better don't hold a candle to Miraflores. Oh, Miraflores ain't such a much. It will be what you take hold. Ain't nothing you can't do, Baudry. I've been thinking a man gets to settle down, he's gonna want a woman to back him up. There are plenty of those pretty little chiquitas below the border just waiting to be lassoed. But you throw a long loop, too. I never did build me no reputation being a one-woman man. Wouldn't make no difference to me. Well, 
settled down, roosters got astray a bit, but they was come back to the home roost. My, my. That's a lot of knowing coming from spring chicken. It ain't how long you lived, it's what you done with the living you used up. Well, when you get to San Francisco... Well, I ain't got no reason to go to San Francisco. Got me a reason to go someplace else. Where? Near Flores with you. It's getting late, Noreen. It's never too late to buy into a dream boat, Ree. I got that $500 and it's yours for the asking. I don't want to go it alone no more. Please take me with you. You don't know what you'd be letting yourself in for. I don't care. Because I know I, I wash out pale against all them hot-eyed senoritas. Noreen. Right now, they don't hold a candle to you. He looked me straight in the eye and said he didn't know this, Charo. Next thing I know, he's fallen all over him. Well, maybe it was a mistake. No, I don't think it was a mistake. What about this friend of his that he doesn't know so well? Huh? He's a uh, Mexican, mid-40s, uh, dark, soft-spoken man. Do you have anything on him in the posters? Well, not that I remember, but let's take a look. All right. Howdy. Roy Coffey's my name. Deputy Stryker. Glad to know you. What can we do for you? Hey, you've come a long way. Yeah, I've made shorter rides. Uh, this is Mr. Kennedy. We all call him Candy. Candy. Hi. This man's from Crease, Montana. Crease? I'd say you were looking for a man named Baudry. That's the name on the warrant. I had a man named Baudry locked up in jail here for busting up three cowboys in a saloon all by himself. Now, could that have been him? That's Baudry. Which way do you go? He's uh, at the Ponderosa Ranch. I'll show you. No, I don't want to put you out, none. No trouble. Come on. Well, you got faith in him. You believe in him, you're giving him a stake. Oh, well, that's different. I... See, there was a time on the Pendinalis when I was as good as dead. And, and he saved your life? You know, 50 beeves is little enough to pay for something like that, isn't it? Ain't that something? Willing to sacrifice himself for you. Oh, I... I don't know about that. I was never really sure. Maybe it was because he was one against 12 bloodthirsty Comancheros. Maybe that was challenge enough. So was Miraflores. So was San Francisco. For you. I ain't got no reason to go there now, Mr. Cartwright. I never had nothing all my life. And now I got him. I'm heading out with Baudry. Well. Well, well, well. Did he, uh... Did he ask you to, to go along with him? Good as. Miraflores. Rough country. It's a whole lot different from what you've been used to. Oh, I don't care about that. All I care about is him. Why are you telling me? You're his friend. I, I, I thought... I was hoping you'd be happy for him. For, for both of us. Of course. Of course. 
us. Well, I better go back. Won't do to keep Bodie waiting. these days. Fact is, I'm here on business. I reckon you know what it is. Listen, you'd never believe who's, uh, who's running this spread, you know. Benton Cartwright. Oh, Ben? Yeah. Why, well, I haven't seen him since he took the salute after the battle with Sarah Busco. <laughs> <laughs> and up rides this lad to the camp cook. Now he's got scare oozing out of every pore. He says, the line's broke. Run for your life, lady. The banditos are coming. <laughs> Well, she just hauls off and whacks him clean out of that saddle with a big old fry pan. <laughs> now, she said, you got a choice to make here, boy. You can either get killed by them or by me. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd you hear that story? <laughs> that was me she hit with her fry pan. <laughs> <laughs> you said you had some business to discuss, Striker. Bo, ain't you never gonna learn? You're, uh, you're not talking about Chris Thorson, are you? He give you a job running those steers in the crease. And I delivered him like he said. And you run off with Thorson's 500. Well, I just figured for a loan. You didn't tell him. Why, I blew more than that in one night having a bus with Chris that time we came down from the Canadian with all them belts. More than $1,000 in one night. Times change, man. Fun's fun, but this is business. Tell you what, Bo. You give me the money. I'm sure he'll be willing to forget the old thing for old time's sake. And if I don't? Then I'll have to bring you back to Crease and make you stand trial for cattle thieving. You better give him back that money. I was going to give it back as soon as I got set up in Mira Flores with all those cattle you were running. Deal is off. Give it back. Ben! Give it back. better make your peace, Baldry. Ain't no running room left these days. I helped you tame a few towns, Stryker. Hey, come to this. Those were the old times. The good times. Now all I got is a war bag full of memories. And this here badge. And just a job keeping it. Seventy-five a month and found. Working for the storekeepers as runs the towns. 
I'll see you, Ben. I need those cattle, Ben. I can still make it below the border. After all we've been through, I ain't asking for charity, Ben. He don't need it. Baudry, I got $500. Now, you can count it if you want to, but I want to buy a piece of Miraflores, too. Looks like the deal's still on, Ben. Final business. Baudry, holler when you're ready. My girl. Yeah, they made her. They busted the mold. <laughs> well, that is 50 heads worth. He forced me from Padre. He was going to take me to the sheriff. My rally badge means nothing here, you know that. I can cause no incident. This is the man Padre said he didn't know. He has something to say I think you ought to hear. It's Matar. Mm. Matar! You remember me, senor? Yes. From Miraflores. Of course I do, of course I do. What are you doing up here? I came to... To warn Baudry. Warn him about what? Tell him. Well? Baudry's got a price on his head in Miraflores. If he goes back down there, they'll kill him. He's my friend. I, I had to warn him. Well. How long have you known? Huh? You lied about Mary Forrest. Would I hurt Ben? You? No, not me. Maybe Noreen. What about her? I need her. She's going to help me settle down. You settle down? You're going to be on the run for the rest of your life. Striker squared things in Montana. What have I got to run from? I'll tell you what you got to run from. Yourself. I need them bees, Ben. A deal's a deal. You got no choice. You have a choice. Them beeves or that girl. Well, they don't mean nothing without that girl left to believe in me. I need her, Ben. And what do you do when you've run through her money? And when you've used her up? How's she gonna feed on those glory tales of yours when you leave her behind to go off yondering again? I won't leave her! You can tell her that. Maybe she'll believe you, but I don't. Audrey, you're a liar. Bow. Oh. Ben, get up on your feet. Call me a liar. No, no, stop it. Don't please. Get out of my way. You're still faster with your fists than with your head, aren't you? Well? Oh. That's all right, Bo. Look, just you and me. Five hundred dollars can get us clear out of here. No, Maureen. Nobody puts a brand on Baudry. You need me, Bo. I got things to do and places to go, and I aim to be free, and I got no need for nobody.
Let him go, girl. Let him go. I hate to leave. I keep hoping he'll change his mind. Well, Noreen, Baudry's a man who never looks back. What's ever going to happen to him? Mr. Cartwright, do you think he'll ever settle down? I don't know. Hope so. By the way, the Perrys will be waiting for you when you get to San Francisco. They're nice, quiet folks, and they'll see that you get the right start. Thank you. Bye-bye. Sight. Didn't want to spoil the goodbyes, but I want to say goodbye to you, Ben. Those bees are in the northwest pasture. You better take them along with you. Oh, Ben. Now, for old times' sake. But the fights we once had, and the one we didn't have. All right, Ben. You. you going with him? Si, sí, senor. A man has to have a compadre along. Someone he understands. Swap lies with. Adios. 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 How much of Baudry is a lie and how much of him is really the truth? I don't think even Baudry could answer that. Come back from Sacramento. Spent two weeks with honorable cousin. <laughs> well, I think the Cartwrights would be here to meet you. <laughs> Hops and Clavo all alone. I go live in stable, I lend horse, I go back to Ponderosa. Well, they're going to be glad to see you. Two weeks of their own cooking. <laughs> <laughs> Hop Sing, what can I do for you? Mr. Jackson, you have a nice horse for Lent for Hop Sing? Sure thing. This one's all ready to go. Cost you a dollar. You can bring the horse back whenever it's handy. He's a good horse. He no buck. Dan ain't bucked in 10 years. Very good. Hey, China boy. You ride a horse pretty good. Not very good, Mr. Younger. They're just so-so. Oh, you know me. Oh, yes. Uh, I remember you. You come to Pandalosa one time with uh, uh, Mr. Davis. That's right, I did. You got shoved off the place. All set, Hopsing. Wait a minute, China boy. Answer me a question. Leave him alone, Amy. You stay out of this. You got in my way once before, and I had to move you. You don't want that to happen again. Now, I have heard that this pigtail gets a China boy into him. Let's go, Sonny. Let's go now. Hold on, China boy. You're the youngest, Tom. <laughs> what I was wondering no, no. was that, that pigtail will get you to him. Then why won't it get me to him? That's about the only way you'd get in, Amo. Look at that! Stop it! 
Yesterday's stage from Sacramento, he ain't showed up. Well, Hopson came in yesterday morning on the 10 o'clock stage. You sure about that? Stood right here and talked to him. He was going down to the livery stable and get a horse and ride out to your place. Let's go out to the livery stable. Yeah. Well, didn't he get to the Ponderosa? Well, he was here then. Yeah, and he left at a dead gallop. I figured he'd head for home like a scalded cat. I've been waiting to see what you Cartwrights were going to do. What do you mean, Tom? Emil Younger cut off Hopsink's pigtail. What? He cut off Hop Singh's pigtail. I tried to stop him, but Younger and Davis, his partner, were together. So I got slapped sideways, is what it amounted to. And Emil just went ahead. He did right out, though. Yeah, they put Hop Singh on a horse, booted the horse, and out he went. I figured he'd headed for home. But he didn't. He never showed up. You know what that's got to do to him? Yeah. At this time, he doesn't know where he's at. Tom, thanks. I'll let you know if I hear anything. Sure. Thanks, Tom. You realize what that pigtail meant to him? Yeah. Well, I reckon we ought to split up and go looking for him, don't you reckon? Yeah. Joe, if you take that lake road, and I'll take that beaver metal trail. Candy, you stay on the main road and see if you can find any place to pull it off. All right. Three hours, and we'll meet at the old relay station. Yeah, good enough. Told me you sold him Danny for a hundred dollars. Yep, I sold him. That buckskin was mine. I raised him from a coat. You didn't have no right to sell him, no right in the world. This ain't the best paint in the world, but I gotta do something to brighten this place up. He wasn't an ordinary horse, he was a cutting horse. There ain't a better cutting horse anywhere. We ain't in the business of raising pets. A man wants a horse, so I'll sell him a horse. He wasn't for sale, he was my own personal property. Are you going to quit your whining, or am I going to have to take you outside and slap some sense into your head? Mm. 
You ain't got the guts to kill me. Now go. Get out of here. Go. Get. Grows again. It takes a long, long time. But you're going to live a long, long time. I won't. Like when you're ready for the pearly gates, you're going to have plenty of hair. Hair belongs to me. Mr. Younger, he take, he no give back. You want it back? Without hair, ancestor very unhappy with Hobson. Hobson cannot face Elder. Loose face. Hobson very shame. <laughs> Look, I'll make, I'll make you a deal. You get on your horse and, and ride over the old relay station at Twin Forks and you wait for horse and candy. I'll go on over to Younger's place and see if I can't get it back for you. How's that sound? That sound very good. Excuse me, I... For a good horse? I got horses will make your Ponderosa stock look like crow bait. You like my souvenir? I think it belongs to a friend of mine. You don't say. Yeah, I do say. I'm going to take it back to him. Don't you worry, I'm going to pay you for it.
Hobbs ain't told us what you were up to. If you hadn't come along when you did, we was gonna come after you. I don't need any help with the likes of Younger. Oh. There you go. Thank you, little Joe. You're very good to Hop Singh. Forget it. Hop Singh, no forget. Someday, maybe, I help you. All right, you got a deal. Go on and get in the wagon. Hey, what you got in your hand? Paint. Younger was painting a table. Must have fallen against it. We had a little discussion before I left his place. Let's get out of here. Get up. Somebody went and killed Amo. Yeah, hit him on the head with a two by four. He's lying on the floor at our place now, dead. Two by four was fresh painted. Look, I don't want no trouble. I'm just gonna get the sheriff, that's all. Did you hit Younger with a two before? What do you think, I killed him? That ain't what I ask you. I hit him. I hit him with my fist, just my fist. All right. He was lying there when I left, but he was knocked out, that's all. White paint in his hair and hair all over this two before and handprints all over this. This has got to be what killed him. Look, I, I, I never touched that tube before. I got the paint on my hand on this table. Look, this table wasn't like this. It was lying on the floor and somebody's painted over it again. There was a handprint on this table. Unfortunate, little brother. It ain't there no more. Here comes Roy and Davis. What are you doing here? I figured you'd be running. Joe, is it like Davis here told me? Is Younger dead? Yeah, he's dead, all right. Go ahead, take a look. I told you. There's a two before. See the hand marks on it? The white paint on Abel's hair? Yeah. Joe, you were here. Yeah, yeah, I was here. The younger cut off Hop Singh's pigtail. I came out to get it. We had a fight. Now, he was lying on the floor when I left here, but he was knocked out. That's all. Did you knock him out with that two-by-four in there? No, I didn't touch the two-by-four. What about this white paint on your hand? Well, we are having the fight. I fell back against the table. The paint was wet. That's a lie. Sure. 
if there ain't no marks. Look, I know there's no mark on it now, but there was before. Joe, I'm gonna ask you straight out. Did you kill Emil Younger? No, I did not. You were here? You had a reason to have a fight with him? You admit that you had one? That two by four in there undoubtedly killed him. And there was a hand mark on the two by four, and you have white paint on your hand. I don't have any choice but to take you into jail. Boss, if you and Davis here to load the body in the buckboard, I'd appreciate it. I'll be rattling into town. I'll get the lawyer and telegraph Paul. I'm also the county prosecutor with a job to do. Let me help you by accepting a plea of second-degree murder. What? Well, I don't believe that the murder was premeditated. Uh, I think it was something that happened in the heat of a fight. Uh, a smaller man defending himself against a bigger man by whatever means was available. Look, Sam, I didn't kill Younger. I swear to you, I didn't kill him. A plea of guilty to second-degree murder would mean a sentence of 10 years in prison. A conviction of first-degree murder would mean death by hanging. No! Now, look, I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna plead guilty to a murder that somebody else did. You have in mind who the somebody else might be? Why, what about Davis? Yeah, that thought occurred to the sheriff and me. Davis was with Mr. and Mrs. Whitby in the presence of their children when Younger was killed, beyond any shadow of a doubt. Not kill Younger. I hope you'll get a good attorney to defend your brother. We got the best, Sam. We got Ed Gilder. You're gonna need everything he's got to keep Joe from the gallows. Sit down, Candy. Have a piece of pie. Oh, yeah, a piece of pie sounds good. I go get it. How did Hobson get his pigtail back on? Well, I decided to tie it together. We could grow another one. Ah, thank you, Hobson. Little Joe in jail? It's all my fault. Nothing Hobson can do to help. You want to help him, buddy? Take him a couple of these pies. Grubbing that jail is terrible. It's a good idea. I go right away. I cook now. Now that you had an opportunity to talk to Joe, what do you think? Well, I don't think your brother's chances look very good. But why? He didn't kill Younger. Are you sure of that? What do you mean? Haas, the evidence against Joe is pretty strong. Yeah, the motive, the opportunity, and the pain on his hand makes it look as though he handled a murder weapon. Yeah, but he didn't. He told me he didn't, and he don't lie. Oh, Haas, when a man's faced with the gallows, he'll lie himself blue in the face. I'm not saying Joe's a liar. Excuse, please, Mr. Haas, Mr. Giltner. I'm not saying Joe's a liar, but it'd be pretty hard to convince a jury that he's not. Well, what are you going to do? Well, I'll salvage what I can. Now, you go on home. I'll see you later. Did you need anything, Mr. Haas? Yeah, 
anything else, little Joe. You just holler. Good morning, Honorable Shelley. Hello, Hop Sang. What do you got there? It's a pie for, for little Joe. Oh. Hey, that smells good. You're going to have to leave it out here, though. The prosecutor gave me a list of the people that could see Mr. Joe, and uh, your name was not. Oh. Uh, you give to little Joe, please. All right, fine. Maybe he'll give me a little piece, too. Oh, you got a nice table. Oh, that's evidence. This is the club that killed Emil Younger, and I'm sorry to say that little Joe's hand mark is on it, too. Must see little Joe. Now, Hop Singh, I told you I couldn't let you see little Joe. Your name ain't on the list. It is very important. Doesn't make any difference. The answer is no. Now, I've got my orders, and I'm giving you yours. You run along and take care of your business, and I'll take care of mine. Uh, can I have paper, pencil, please? I think the county can afford that, yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome for whatever you got. What do you suppose he's up to? I don't know. I ain't never seen him that excited before. <laughs> he's talking a lot of gibberish. I know he's gonna explode like one of his firecrackers. I find, I find, I find. What? Little Joe chop on laser. What? Little Joe chop on laser. Wait, wait a minute. Chop on razor? Is that what you're saying? Little Joe is innocent. Oh, Hop Singh, we know that. You can prove? Well, no, we can't prove it. I wish we could. I prove. I prove. You can prove? How? Chop on stick, kill younger. It's a not little Joe Chop. Chop belong somebody else. What's this? Look. Yeah, Hop Singh, be careful with that thing. This is a little Joe laser. Here. Nobody chops laser except little Joe. That's right. This is little Joe Chop. chop. Hop Singh, what are you talking about? What is a chop? You got chop. I got chop. He got chop. Everybody got chop. Our chop is a different. Uh, look, Hop Singh, just calm down. Now, I know you're all upset about losing your pigtail and little Joe being in jail and all, but this is no time to panic and lose our heads. Look. <clears throat> look. That's my, that's my thumb mark. Is, is that a chop? That's a chop. Everybody got chop. All the same is a different. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. You lost me again. Wait, 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 wait. What you're saying is that Hoss has a chop, and I have a chop, and you have a chop, but they're all different. That's right. And you can look at a chop and tell who made it? That's right. That's right. Oh, come on. You mind if I test you? Sure. All right. All right, all right. Come over here. Close your eyes. Close them. <laughs> All right, Hopsing, come here. Now, there's two chops here. You tell me which one's me and which one's Hoss. Where are you going? This chop, this chop, Mr. Hoss chop. This chop, your chop. Well, that's pretty good. How'd you do that? I copy chop from Stick Kill Mr. Younger. Look, little toe chop or laser, two chop not the same. What do you think, Hoss?
Well, they, they sure are different, ain't they? Seems that way to me. You know something? I think old Hobson may have something, Candy. With this information, we can prove that that chopper, that mark on that two before ain't Little Joe's. And therefore, we can prove his innocence, can't we? That's right, Horace. That's what I say. Chop proof Little Joe is innocent. Little Joe help Hop Sing. Now Hop Sing help Little Joe. How'd you get to know all this stuff about chops? Chinese know about chop long, long time. Thousand year. Everybody chop is a different. Sign paper with a chop, make pottery, put chop in a wet clay, then everybody know who make the pottery. A trademark. That's a lie. Yeah, or a signature. Everybody born with a chop. It's a his chop all his life. Never change. Chinese people is a very smart. Know this a long, long time. Yeah, the trouble is nobody else knows it. How are we going to make them believe it? That's what we got a good lawyer for. Well, it's very interesting. No practical use to us whatsoever. Mr. Goner. You mean. You mean we can't use it? No, we can't. But I don't understand. Why? Well, no judge would accept it as evidence. But why not? Well, first, there's no scientific proof to substantiate your cook's claim that every man's thumb mark is different. Second, there's no legal precedent. And without precedent, it will not be given serious consideration. But, Mr. Yoder, the Chinese have been using this for over a thousand years. I mean, their thumbprints on their pottery, they use it like a trademark. Ain't that precedent enough? Not in this country, it isn't. Now, Haas, your brother's gonna be faced with an American court. And there's no place there for Chinese superstition. We're gonna face an American jury. And we gotta give them cold, hard facts. That ain't cold, hard facts enough. Not in this country, it's not. That's the only choice we got. It's the only way we can save little Joe. Us, in my opinion, the only way we can save little Joe is by a plea of guilty to second-degree murder. Mr. Gilder, that's ten years in the penitentiary. Ten years? Or the gallows? It's your choice, Haas. Which is it gonna be? I'm not going to plead guilty to something I didn't do. Uh, I told you all that, and I told him I didn't blame you a whole lot. He says it's either that, take 10 years, or, or hang. Yeah, well, it's not going to be either one. He ain't going to have nothing to do with hop sings, chops, or finger marks. He says if you don't plead guilty to the second degree charge, it, he won't even take the case. Well, I would get another lawyer, then. That ain't gonna work either. I talked to Mr. William and Mr. Thomas both. They feel the same way about it Mr. Gilder does. All right, then you handle it. Oh, you ain't serious. Oh, yes, I am. Joe, I, I don't know nothing about being a lawyer. It doesn't make any difference. I'd rather have you handle it and believe it in me than have the best lawyer in town that thinks I'm guilty. Joe, you'd be putting your money on a lame horse. It's my money. It's my neck, brother. Look, let me go back over and talk to Gilder one more time. Maybe I can do something. I'll see you later. All right. Come in. Oh, hello, Hoss. Hi, Mr. Gilder. Sit down. Just over to jail talking to little Joe. Yeah? Well, you know how little Joe is. He's, well, he's sort of, well, he's hard headed. It's what he is. Yes, I know. Well, he's bound and determined that he ain't going to plead guilty to something he didn't do, and I don't blame him a whole lot. So I came back to ask you one more time if, if you wouldn't plead his case, innocent, and do what you could with Hop Singh's 
thumb marks or chops or whatever he called them. No, Haas, I won't. Because it won't work. And that's my considered opinion as a pretty fair country lawyer. Yes, sir. Well, had to ask you to handle it. I reckon under the circumstances, Mr. Gilner, that you can consider yourself relieved of any responsibility. I'll, I'll be doing his lawyering from here on out. Haas, you're not qualified. Yes, sir, I know. Look. As your brother's lawyer and as a friend of the family's, I'm going to insist that you let me plead this case. Mr. Gilner, I, I don't reckon insisting is going to do a lot of good unless you decide you want to play it our way. Thanks, anyhow. Hi. Right. Yes, sir? I uh, won't play it your way, but I will be at the defense table to offer a word of advice now and then. Thanks. You know, I got a, I got a funny notion that some of that advice I'm gonna be needing a bunch of. Thanks. The case of the People versus Joseph Cartwright. Prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The record shows the defendant has entered a plea of not guilty to a charge of first-degree murder. I understand the defense would like to change that plea. No, sir. Your Honor, the defense will continue the plea of not guilty. Who are you, and what part are you going to play in this trial? Well, I'm, I'm Joe's brother, and I'll be acting in his defense if it's all right with you, sir. Oh, it's all right with me, and I presume it's all right with the defendant. Mr. Giltner, are you withdrawn from the case? No, Your Honor. I'm acting in an advisory capacity. It's all very irregular. However, Mr. Gort, would you please begin? I call Dr. Bliss. He was killed by a blow from a blunt instrument. Emil was dead on the floor, white paint on his hair, and a sear club lying right beside him. No, sir, there wasn't any smear on the table. It was clean painted, just like it is here. Thank you, Sheriff. You may step down. Your Honor, the people rest. Mr. Cartwright, you may now begin. Your Honor, I'd like to get our cook up here, Hop Singh, if I could. Come on up, Hop Singh. Hop Singh, you understand the meaning of the oath? Yes, sir, Judge. Hop Singh is a very good Baptist. I promise to say the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So help me God. I do. Now, Hop Singh, these little lands all of us have on our thumbs and fingers. See them little lines? What do you call them, Hop Singh? It's called Finger Ridge. Finger Ridge, or a thumb ridge, right? Yes, sir. Now, look here. If I was to pick up this tube for a while, the paint was still wet on it, and leave a mark there where my thumb and fingers all touched it, what would you call that? It's called chop. Chop. Now, if you were to pick it up while it was still wet, and you left a mark on it. Would it be exactly like mine? No, Mr. Horst. All chop is different. All chops are different. Your Honor, uh, what's the point of all this? I was about to ask the same question. Well, Your Honor, if I can prove that everybody leaves a different mark when they touch something, what Hop Singh calls a chop, then I can prove that the mark or the chop on this two before was not made by my little brother. Therefore, he never touched the murder weapon, right? We can't accept this testimony. There's no proof that everybody leaves a different mark. There's no precedent. Your Honor, it's been explained to me that the Chinese have known about these marks for centuries. They've been used as signatures, as identifying marks on such objects as pottery. It's true. And 
I suggest that this is precedent enough. I object. Chinese beliefs, practices, superstitions have no place in an American court of law. Let me remind you that a man is on trial here for his life. This court, and I trust the prosecution, will listen to any evidence that may have a bearing on the final verdict. Can you uh, prove this theory, Mr. Cartwright? Well, that's what I was aiming to do, Your Honor. Go right ahead. Candy, bring that package up here. Now then, gentlemen, here is a clean piece of glass. Been wiped off. There's not a mark on it. You'll notice your name's up there. I want you to take your right thumb and put your thumb mark right above each of your names. And Ed, I'll show you yours. Right there on the corner, Ed. Right there in the middle, Bill. There you are, Hoss. May I examine that, please? Yes, sir. Don't put any marks on it or smudge any of those that are already on it. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I had no intention of interfering with this demonstration of uh, oriental abracadabra. <laughs> <laughs> now, then, uh, Hop Sing on a blindfold, you. If you'd like to examine this. No, that's perfectly all right. Okay. Now then, I'd like one of you fellows to put your right thumbprint on this. Your Honor, I object. No, that's all right, Mr. Gilder. That's all right. Let's see what Hop's saying. Hopsing, examine that thumbprint on that mirror and tell me who it belongs to. This is going to make it tougher. Haven't you ever gambled? Not when there's a man's life at stake. Top on mirror is not belong to jury. Top on mirror is belong to Mr. Court. I protest. This is a trick. Mr. Cartwright signaled Hop Singh in some way. Well, my chop, my mark wasn't even on that pane of glass. Oh, I beg your pardon, Mr. Gort. You remember when you took the glass from me? I told you not to, but you did. You put a mark on it. Whether you know it or not, you put one on there. You ought to get yourself a good lawyer. Your Honor, gentlemen of the jury, Mr. Gort had no more idea that he was putting an identifiable mark on that glass or that mirror when he did than the murderer of Emil Younger knew that he was putting an identifiable mark on this weapon, this weapon of murder. Now, Your Honor, all I have to do is prove to you and these men here in this jury that that mark and the murder weapon is not that of my little brother's. Joseph? Here, Joseph, put a thumbprint on there. Go ahead and put both of them on there. Mr. Hoss. Your Honor, I don't know how to go about this. I don't know what the rules and regulations are, but I'd like to have Mr. Jackson take the stand. I object. Mr. Gort, will you approach the bench? Mr. 
Jackson, step over here and be sworn. I'm saying go out there and take my chair, will you? used to own that Younger Davis property, didn't you? And didn't Younger sort of beat you out of it? No, I never felt that. As a matter of fact, you've been holding a grudge against him ever since, hadn't you? No, I never held any grudge. Mr. Jackson, the other day when you told us, Joe and Candy and me, that Younger had cut off Hop Singh's big deal, didn't you know that was going to make trouble? I mean, big and bad trouble? I didn't think it caused any real trouble. Didn't you go out there to make sure Younger got no, what was I didn't coming to him? I go out there. You waited until you saw little Joe come out, and then you went in. No, no, I never went in. Oh, you didn't go in. You found him unconscious, picked up this tube before, and you beat him no, to death. No, I it, didn't. didn't you? Then you painted over Joe's handprints on the table. No, didn't no, you? I didn't. Hop Singh. Mr. Hoss. Will you stand and tell this court, this judge and jury, exactly what you told me a moment ago? Chop on club, same as chop of Mr. Jackson. Oh, no. No, no, no. no. We'll hold Mr. Jackson until charges can be brought against him. Come on, Jackson. I declare this a mistrial. Defendant Joseph Cartwright is released on his own recognizance, pending a new hearing. This court is adjourned. <laughs> Brother. Congratulations. Thank you. Joe, I'm glad we got the right man. So <laughs> That has been a memorable homecoming. What I'm particularly proud of is the way everybody handled himself, and especially you, Hobson. I just don't know how we can thank you. It's all the same, Mr. Carlyle. It's, it's not necessarily. Hey, here we go, Hop Singh. Take a look at that. We cooked them up special to show our appreciation. Oh, okay. Here we Thank go. Thank you. A good look. Grab a couple of these, right. huh? Dig right into that. Yeah. What's the matter? What's the matter? Well, Shamela, I saved your life. You try to kill me? Oh, oh, that I am, Mobachi. You keep your chop off my chop. You punch a cow half sink cook, all right? Yeah. <laughs> Pray that the souls of the departed may ascend unto the glory of God. And with this consecrated earth, Charles Ball, I give you to your maker. And may you rest in peace through all eternity. Thank you, Parson. Get on with it. Mr. District Attorney, could you uh, perhaps make a statement now? Yes. How will this affect the case? It's a setback. It'll mean a delay, but that's all. Sooner or later, I mean to bring these scoundrels to justice. In addition to their other crimes, I'm going to see the answer to this. Could I say that this has been a deliberate and brutal murder? You may say that the man we're burying here today, Charles Ball, was brutally murdered to prevent his testimony. Oh. 
is it? We're in Ludlow. Burn? What the devil are you doing here at 2 o'clock in the morning? It's good to see you. What's the matter? Your horse lose a shoe or something? I'm sorry to bother you like this, Ben. That's all right. Um, who else is here? A horse and little Joe. Candy, you know, one of them. Well, I know they're reliable. What's all this about, Ben? I'm going to ask you a favor. And I'm going to ask it both as an old friend and in my official capacity as United States Marshal. Well, let's get on with it. Ask him. Ben. Go ahead. This is Charles Ball. <laughs> I hear that you've been murdered and buried. I just never shook hands with a cook before. Staying, Ben. See, we put out the story a couple of days ago that he was killed. I, uh, I've got to get back. It wouldn't look right. But that'll give you the responsibility of guarding him. Uh, guard him against whom? Anybody. Everybody. Popular fella? Joe, you better go outside and see if the marshal's men need anything. All right. Burn? I have a few more details about this case that Mr. Ball is involved in. Well, the, uh, the case involves uh, defrauding the government and misuse of government land. And murder, don't forget that. It's all right, Charles. It isn't poison. All came from the same pot. You see, they've uh, already tried to kill him twice. After the first attempt, we put him in the security of the prison at Carson City. And the day before yesterday, one of the guards, a man with 15 years' service, shot him twice. Money talks. To some people. So you see, Ben, I do need your help. But I, uh, I wouldn't blame you if you turned me down. Well, when I said I'd help you, I'll help you. Thanks. I'd like you to take a letter to my wife. Well, it's out of the question. No one's supposed to know you're here. I'm not going to tell her where I am, just that I'm still alive. That's all. I promise. No, I can't take the chance. Harry, it's been through enough. I can't let her go on thinking I'm dead. Why, it's only until we get you to the grand jury next week. Marshal, either I write that letter, or you're going to have to go back to the grand jury and tell them that I can't give one word of testimony. That'll blow the case right out the window. <laughs> All right. But I want to read it when you're done. Use my desk there, Billy. Like. It does make a difference who holds the cards. Doesn't it?
crowbar, Haley. I heard something. Can't be anything important. Oh, the watchman will be gone for another hour yet. Get on with it, Haley. Tell him. you hired to kill Bo must have missed. Only thing in that coffin was a log. So Bo is still alive. I want the men on every road going out of Carson City. Have them nose around the towns, the cafes, even the doctors. Have somebody check the stage depots, the railroads, telegraph offices. And put Haley and a couple of others to watching Mr. Ball's wife. Yes, sir. Rogers. You better find Mr. Ball. Candy here thinks we made a mistake. Yeah, he thinks we bought gun trouble by bringing in Mr. Ball. He doesn't like taking the extra risk. Well, that's not the way I said it, but that's what I meant. You don't think we ought to give Mr. Ball protection, huh? No, I don't. I think he's a thief. Well, that, uh, that really isn't the point, is it? The point is that the marshal asked us to give him protection. And Mr. Ball is going to give testimony so that bigger thieves will be put behind bars where they belong. Are you against putting crooks in jail? No, I'm not. You think the other crooks are going to hold still for it? They tried to get him while he was in jail. They shot him. They're going to try to get him here. Now, if I didn't know you better, I'd, uh, I'd say you were scared. Yeah, I'm scared. That's right. You bet on it. I'm scared five or six of them are going to come. And there's going to be one or two of you here. And the rest of us are going to be out in the rain somewhere. And we'll get back just in time to bury you. That's what I'm scared of. Joe, have you seen my derringer? No, I didn't, Bob. Isn't it in the drawer there? Uh, it's not in the desk. It's not here. Ball's got it. What made you say that? Well, you remember he sat at the desk when he uh, wrote that letter to his wife. He must have taken it then. He might be right. I'll see if he's got it. Now, wait a minute, Joe. Joe. Let him keep it. What do you mean, let him keep it? He's a distraught, frightened man. Let him keep it. All right, he's distraught and he's frightened. What good's the Derringer gonna do him? Probably no good at all, but at least it might give him a little confidence, which I think he needs right now. And suppose he decides to use it on us. He won't, Joseph. We're the only people who can keep him alive. Candy, I got Luke keeping watch on the hill so he can watch both ways. Spell him right now with you. Okay. You're sure you want him to keep the gun, huh? Yes. 
first, I'm sure. Okay. Just don't turn your back on him. There. How's that? Fine. You've been very kind. Don't mention it. You, uh... You've been hitting that stuff pretty hard. Can't stand the shaking. This helps. You might try some sunshine. It's a nice day outside. Why don't you come out and get some fresh air? We'll see. Haas? Yeah? Do you mind if I ask you something? No. Why'd you take me in? Well, you, you had to stay someplace. It's not as simple as that, and you know it. Well, it, it had to be done. That's all there is to it, Mr. Ball. Decided to come down. I haven't wanted to impose, Mr. Cartwright. Oh, there's no one position. Oh, I'm on my way. All right, Hoss, we'll see you later. Where's he going? He's going outside to relieve Candy. We're keeping watch on the road in. I see. Do you mind if I go outside? Of course not. Go right ahead. It's perfectly safe. Unfortunately, I've heard that before. Now, we searched the place thoroughly, there's no one around. Yeah, where were we now? Oh, yes. Extra payroll. Howdy. I didn't mean to spook you. You always sneak around like that? I don't sneak. I just walk soft. It's a habit I found very useful. You're the one didn't want me here the other night. I never said that. You didn't have to. Trouble dumped in your lap, nothing in it for you. That's about it. If it had been up to me, I'd uh, probably just said, sorry, full up. But it wasn't my say, it was Mr. Cartwright's. The Cartwrights. They seem like nice people. They are. What's their angle? Oh, I mean, they're taking me in. There isn't any. Come on, everybody's got his price. Not them, for a fact. Sticking their necks on the block? They must think they're going to get something out of it. Well, you think about it real hard. Maybe the right answer will come to you. Depends on how sharp you are. Picking cotton for a change. Should try playing checkers for a change. How about a nightcap? Uh, I'm 
I'm sorry I didn't mean to stare. I was just thinking, you look like a happy man. I haven't given that too much thought, but I uh, suppose I am. Came out of the same bottle as this. You see, the first time they used strychnine. You know, you're uh, offering to uh, give testimony. That takes a lot of guts. No, I'm just trying to get a lighter prison term by pleading state's evidence. Well, the same. It'll do a lot of good. You're being used, you know that? This is a very dirty fight. The eight men that will be convicted by my testimony go all the way to the top of the Bureau of Indian Affairs. And if they're not convicted, and there's a very good chance they might not be, they'll kill you. The Marshal forgot to tell you that. He was afraid of scaring you off. Well, I have a feeling that my boys would have insisted that uh, we take you in anyway. You'll be safe here. I'm beginning to believe it. I think for the first time in a long time, I'll sleep through the night. Give me a chance, I'll find her. Please don't tell Martin. Please, you'll kill me. I'm ready, ready. That's enough. He's up with a hundred foot of her all day long. Let her get away from him. You'll be more careful the next time. Telegraph Arteman. Tell him we've located Ball somewhere in the area of Virginia City. Dr. Phipps. Nerve. Test of fire. Never heard of it. I'll see if I can find a Bible for you. Only if you can get it without any trouble. I'll be careful. Yeah. Oh, um, if I do slip up and uh, there's somebody in town, you've always got that gun to fall back on. They know you've got it. If you wanted one, all you had to do was ask. I didn't know that then. You got their angle figured out yet? It's one of two things. Either they're rich enough so they don't have to worry about being practical, or they've got an arrangement with the marshal. You know, scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. <laughs> Keep trying. Can I get him inside? Automatic. Is that somebody coming? A woman. Oh, no, she came over the hill. She almost slipped past me. I'll be here in about five minutes. Mr. Ball, you better get him beside the house. She won't come this way. The woman is my wife. Your wife? Yeah, you should see I sent for her. What do you mean you sent for her? How? The letter I gave Ludlow had a coded message, a code my wife and I agreed a long time ago. Twenty-seven people in the town since morning. A couple of families, some ranchers. I got men covering the general stores, both banks, and the saloons. What about the doctors? The telegraph office? Mm, them too. Nothing so far. We're spread a little thin, but uh, I don't think we'd miss anything important. Cowboy just come in driving a buckboard with a bay team. I'll take a look. Give me a beer. How are you? I'll get back on watch. Yeah. I'll take care of a horse. Miss Ball, I'm Ben Cartwright. We'd better get inside the hospital. How did you find your husband? Oh, I'm sure there's nothing to worry about. 
If you found him, so could somebody else. I told you I used a code. Now you just be quiet. How did you find your husband? It was a code. We arranged it a long time ago. I just wanted to verify that. That was very foolish, Mr. Ball. She wasn't following. You lied to the Marshal. You promised Marshal Ludlow no information, just that you're alive and well. All right, I went back on my word, but she's here now, and that's all that's important. Paul, you think I'll ride in and tell the Marshal? They'll send me away again, right? Mr. Cartwright, please. Since this happened four months ago, I don't think Charles and I have had 15 minutes together. I haven't made up my mind yet. What's the harm, Mr. Cartwright? She won't tell anybody. So stay out of sight, like me. Are you sure you weren't followed? I haven't had very much experience at this sort of thing. That's right, you haven't. But I know there are some places where a man can't very well follow a woman. So I slipped out the back of a dressmaker's in Virginia City yesterday, and I doubled back to the state line. I spent the night at a little boarding house, and I rented a different horse to come up here on. I, I kept off the main roads. This is all above board, Mr. Cartwright, I promise you. Why don't you go upstairs? You probably want to freshen up before you eat. Then I can stay. For the time being. Thank you. I do appreciate this, Mr. Cartwright. I want to take a look at that arm. Oh, it's coming. Fine. I know. I missed you so much. Harry, I must tell you, I made a deal with some of the boys. Charles, let me take a look at that wound, and then we'll talk about it. supplies and a bottle of medicine. Are you sure? I bet I'm sure. Right. After that, he went to the doctor's and got three rolls of bandages. I think we've located Mr. Ball. Now, the cowboy won't be easy to follow. What do you mean? Didn't you get the brand on the horse? Yeah. Then don't try to follow him. Go to the courthouse and look at the brand book. Rogers, get Haley and the rest of the men together. Tell them we're going to ride. Right. What are you so worried about? It's good news. Fifty thousand dollars. You won't mind that, will you? What will it cost you? It'll mean a new life for us. It won't mean a new life unless you change. Isn't it a little late for that? Charles, I've gone along because that's what a wife should do. But I don't always like it. What is your deal? When I testify, I clear the names of seven of the defendants and place the entire blame on one of them. And that one? Bardman. He deserves hanging anyhow. Did you make this agreement before the guard tried to kill you or afterwards? Before, so it must have been Vardman. Why Vardman? If the others double-crossed him, why not you? If you get killed, they save $50,000. Are 
I don't accept the offer, they will have me killed. They promised me that. And if you do accept the offer of the seven, Vardman will kill you one way or another. They are savages, chewing each other up. They're cannibals. Harriet, any one of them, or all eight of them, will kill me if possible. If I stay alive to testify, I stand a very good chance of earning $50,000 in gold. And the money means that much to you? Yes. I want you alive. Don't you understand that? I want you alive. And nothing else matters to me. I'll stay alive. And I got the money. You'll see. On guard? Yeah. Hello, with my cricket. Oh, yeah. hey, I got your medicine. You don't need this. Do you have any trouble getting it? Not much. Did anybody see you get it? Well, sure, I had to buy it, didn't I? I mean, any strangers? Did any stranger take a particular interest in it? No strangers, none. No one followed me out of town. <laughs> well, I'm gonna relieve us. Fine, all right. Yeah, let me help. Ponderosa. All right, you men, get out of sight. All right, let's scatter. Ready? What am I do for you, mister? Just riding through, looking for some likely land to homestead. You can't homestead this property. Why not? Ponderosa Ranch belongs to Ben Cartwright. Does it? How do you know that? I'm his son, Joe Cartwright. Well, I'm glad to know you, Joe Cartwright. Now, if you don't mind, just drop your gun to the ground. What's that, some kind of a joke? Just look behind you on either side. I'll go on from here. Alone? They have no reason to do anything to me. We'll try the easy way first. All right, I'll spot the men all around. Lamb, Frank. Paul, oh, I need to talk to you a minute. What's going on? Oh, nothing. I just need to talk to Paul. Are the riders coming this way? Are they? Yes, sir, they are. Anyone you know? Never saw them before. What did they look like? Well, one of them sort of dressed up a dude. They're after me, I know it. Well, those that are with him are gunmen. How many? Six. 
Mr. Ball, take your wife upstairs. Keep out of sight and keep quiet. Harriet. Boss, go out the back way. Stay around. Candy? Let's you and I get real comfortable. It is Varden. Charles, he couldn't know about the other seven. The 50,000. It may be that he has an offer. Frank Vardman, he came in to kill me. Mr. Cartwright? Yes. I'm Richard Vardaman. Oh, yes, Mr. Vardaman. Of course, I've read about you in the financial pages. Mining, isn't it? Yes, uh, mostly. Uh, what can I do for you? I'm looking for Charles Ball. Charles Ball? I'm afraid I can't help you. So sure about that. I think you can help me. Uh, Candy, did you take your medicine? Oh, yeah. Yeah. The medicine. <clears throat> May I talk to you privately? Well, you can speak freely, Mr. Vardaman. I thought I might save you a little embarrassment. You see, I didn't come unprepared. I came with the power to bargain. <laughs> bargain for what? Your son, for Mr. Ball. My son? Your son, Joseph. I'm holding him prisoner. Mr. Bottom. My son has nothing to do with Mr. Ball. I suggest you release him immediately. I know that Ball is somewhere around Virginia City. Now, you don't strike me as a man afflicted with a case of nerves. And neither one of you look like you're in need of any bandages. So if Mr. Ball isn't here, I'm sure you'll know where he is. I have no idea where Mr. Ball is. I presume you want your son to remain alive. Alive and released. You'll have to give me ball. I can't give you anything I don't have. I'll give you some time to think about it. I'll give you ten minutes. Now you bring ball to me up on the hill, or I'll bring your son to you, dead. and brought him out here. They saw me buy it and they followed me. I didn't fool him any trying to drink it. Waterman. Waterman has his Joe. Yeah, little Joe. Says unless we give up Mr. Ball, he'll kill Joe. What did you tell him? See if there's a chance of getting the horses through the gully. Right. You're going out to leave us undefended? For a while, yes. Maybe you don't know what you're up against. I know exactly what I'm up against. Vardman is one of the most ruthless men in the country. He'll kill your son, then he'll kill me. Well, that 
try to keep both of you alive. The way for the gully looks clear. You don't expect you to make a fight for it, Paul. The figures to come out the front door and make the trade him for Jill. Mr. Cartwright. Mr. Ball, you stay inside this house and keep away from the windows. He won't get his son back, not without trading for him. He's got to try. You find that he can't, then he'll trade me for his son. Or he'll get killed. The department won't need a trade. Then I'll come right in after me. Charles, please. I'm not going to stay here. I'm not going to stay here and die. up there. Then I need a diversion. Let me go, Mr. Cartwright. It's my fault them being there, kind of. All right. I'll give a call, like a nest and jay. Count ten, and then open up. All right. Yeah. Be up about there. Let's go. Cut you to ribbons. We know there's only three down there, boy. Oh, it's just no bird. We can hold up there. All right, Candy, get in that buckboard. Take the reins.
back now. Come on, both of you, quick. Time to get that buckboard out of here, and you get in there with him and stay. Come on, move. <laughs> Down. Move! Josh, what have we done? You jumped right into the fire, lady. That's what you put him. In. You thought we'd treat you for Joe? You still think that? I don't know. I don't know what to say. Say nothing. Keep down! until I'm dead, or he's dead. Charles, what are we going to do? I'm going to testify. If I get out of this alive, I'm going to testify against each and every one of them. They can keep their 50,000. I don't like getting shot at to make a man see the light. Couldn't say thank you. No need. No words. What words can a man use to say thank you for saving my life? Forget it. I can't. I can't even pay you. No. No, you can't even pay me. I don't know what to do. You tell them what you must tell them. Walk a straight line from here on in. That'll be pay enough and thanks enough. Here's your 
bag, ma'am. Thank you. I'll get it, Billy. Pick that hardware up, push your ankle bones right through the sole of your shoe. See you around. All right, see you around, Billy. Uh, tell that cute little Judy hello for me. Right. You know, I swear I know the man driving that wagon, but I can't recall his name. Well, it's Horace Cartwright from the Ponderosa, you know. Haas, of course. Should be easy to remember. She's as big as one. <laughs> yeah. behind us. I'll get you out of there in just a minute. Ain't nobody follow us. We got the road to ourselves. Here. I hope I didn't cause you any trouble. Not at all. 
Thanks for the ride. Oh, yes, ma'am. You're, you're welcome. Hey, where, where are you going? Wait, wait a minute. Where are you going? You can't just walk off into no place. I apologize for being in your wagon. What? I thank you for the ride. Well, sure you did, but... Well, then why can't I go where I want to go? Well, ma'am, you can, but... Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. What do you say we sort of start over again? What I'm trying to say is, ma'am, that, that I ain't angry for you hiding in my wagon. I was just concerned about you. All them boxes bouncing around. I was afraid you might get hurt. Thank you. That's very kind of you. Well, what I'm trying to say is, ma'am, if you want to ride, why don't you get up there in the seat? It's more comfortable. I can't just leave you out here, can I? I'm, I'm going to Carson City. Is there some place around here where I can catch a stage? Yes, ma'am. There's a old abandoned way station right down the road, but the driver will stop for you if he sees you standing out there. Is it out of your way? Not a bit. It's about a mile from my turn off. Come on. All right, all right. I'll ride with you. Fine, fine. There you go. By the way, my name's Hoss Cartwright. What's yours? I'm Lori. What are you doing in the first? It's going to be about three hours before that stage comes by. I don't mind waiting. Ain't much in that old way station except cobwebs and spiders. I'll tell you what, if you'd like, we could have gone out to the Ponderosa and you could have a bite to eat and get a little rest. Thank you, but I've been posed enough already. Oh, ma'am, it ain't no imposition to have a bite to eat with some friends. We make friends around here pretty quick. Thank you, but I'd still rather not. Whatever you want, ma'am. Well. Uh, there is one thing. You don't happen to know what the fare is to Carson City, do you? Yeah, it's three dollars. Well, today, ma'am. Thank you. Have a nice trip, you hear? Thank you. Ma'am, are you sure you wouldn't like me to stay here and wait with you? I, I hate to just leave you out here by yourself like this. Well, if it wouldn't be too much trouble, I'd be very much obliged. Oh, I ain't got much to do no how. It's your pretty day, ain't it? Yes. Hey, that's, uh, that's right pretty. Thank you. It's gold mounting. Cameo's good, too. Yeah, I bet it is. Yeah, that's, that's pretty. I, I'd sell it to you for four dollars. Or three, if that's too much. I thought maybe you might like to buy it for your wife. I, uh, I ain't got no wife, but I'll tell you what. You, you keep the cameo and, and take this anyhow. Uh, Ma'am, it ain't enough even to be considered alone. No. No, I won't be beholden to anybody. I can't take the money unless you take the brooch. Well, I think that's the way you want. That's the way we like. Only, only if you'll write to me and let me know where you are, and I can send it to you if you ever want it. Thank you so very much. You don't have to wait with me now. I'll be all right. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. All righty. Good day again. Good day. Thanks for everything. Yes, ma'am. Have a nice trip, you hear? Thank you, I will.
meet again. going. And we'll need something to keep you warm. Wait a minute. This all done. Pull this up real nice and snug. Should make you much more comfortable. Now, how's that? Yes, thank you. I, I still don't know what happened. One minute I was all right, and the next minute I was just gone. And yeah, we could have the doctor come out and take a look at you, Miss Lori. Hey, it is Miss Lori, isn't it? Yes, Lori Brown. And I don't need a doctor, thank you. Whatever it was, it's gone now, and I feel fine. And I must catch that stage. Uh, not today, Lori. That stage is already gone. You just rest. You can catch the one tomorrow. Be far from me, see? It's a good for you. Make a jumpy stomach purr like kitten. It does smell good. Oh, it tastes good, too. Here, I, I can manage that. Thank you. Have you, uh, you fainted many times before? No, never. You know, I ain't never fainted, but I felt mighty shaky when I missed a meal occasionally. You didn't by chance miss breakfast this morning, did you? I'm not proud to say this, but I didn't have any breakfast. Today or yesterday. Well, all you had to do... Hop saying, go in and get the lady off steak and gravy and, and biscuits and the whole thing. Get her a meal. Oh, no, 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 no. Bra first, then less, and then a big meal. But this lady's hungry. No, he, he is right about one thing. I am very tired. Well, if rest is what you need, rest is what you'll get. We got plenty of that. We got got lots of guest rooms. Come on, I'll help you out. There you go. Hey, excuse me, Mr. Hoss. Come, Missy, I show you. What? You get a nice less, and then after you less, I fix you anything you like to eat. Oh. You like a spaghetti, a Italian food? Hopsing eight number one cook, cook you anything you like. Well? Well what? I think just well. That's what Pa would say if he was in Sacramento, so I thought I'd say it for him. Well. I mean, I couldn't just leave her there at the way station. Gotta... No, 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 no. She just showed up in your wagon. That's right. She was sort of a stowaway. Oh, stowaway. Mm -hmm. Didn't tell you why, though. No, and I promised her I wouldn't ask. And you ain't either, you hear? No, you're right. I'm not going to ask. I'm going to go to work. Yeah, I'm going to go up on Wayne Creek, and I'm going to fix some fences, because that's something I understand. Well, I'd, uh, I'd stick to the regular boots if I were you. Them things will kill your feet. Well, I wondered if you were all right. Yes. But I'm glad you're here because there's something that I've got to tell you. My first name is Laurie. Short for Annie Laurie. But my last name isn't Brown. Yeah, I, I sort of suspected that. If you knew I was lying, then why were you so kind to me? Well, you didn't do it very well. And... It's obvious you ain't had a lot of practice at it, and I didn't figure to be a desperate criminal. Oh, I haven't done anything against the law. 
But it's not Miss, either. I'm married. I ran away from my husband. Well, I reckon you had good reason. Part of it was my fault. I married a man that I'd known for less than a week. I never dreamed that one person could be so wrong about another person as I was about him. I just had to get away. Have you got, uh, you got kin folks nearby here? No, I don't have any folks. Except for an aunt in St. Joe. I was... I was going to get a job in Virginia City to help pay for the fare to get there. But when I got off the stage, I saw a friend of my husband's. He'll get word to my husband. I just know he will. And you figure your... your husband will come after you then, right? Yes. I can't go back to him. I think I'd rather die. See, that's why I was trying to catch the stage to Carson City. I just have to get to Carson City. All right. You will. I'll get you there first thing in the morning to catch that stage. But right now, I think you ought to get a little rest. Yes, I can now. And I will. Come on. Where you been, boss? Kelly expected you yesterday. I didn't have anything to tell him yesterday. sign of her the lady got off the stage in virginia city she's where we can reach out and get her when it's time what do you mean when it's time why didn't you bring her with you oh easy boy slow down kelly easy boy did you expect me to kidnap her off the street she's my wife I told you to bring her back. And that's why I do the planning, not you. Now let go. Always split the partnership and you can do it all on your own. Cooped up here. I'm going half out of my head. Lori tonight. Count me out. Kelly, you can't go near Virginia City. You're wanted all over the state. Not to mention California, Utah, and Montana. Almost any place you name. There's a rope waiting for you. How would you like to be a free man, Kelly? Able to ride into any town, anywhere, and spend all that money I helped you make. If you'll forget Lori, I'll show you how to do it. Keep talking. Ever hear of the Cartwrights? The Ponderosa Ranch. Yeah. We're gonna use Lori 
and the Cartwrights to make you a free man. I hurried. I hope I'm not too late. Oh, no. It'll be an hour before the stage gets to the way station. You're only 20 minutes from next. Sit down. Here. Sit down. Have some breakfast? What'd you like? Oh, no, thank you. I, I really couldn't eat a thing. How about, uh, how about some coffee? Oh, fine. Well, we've got some things we need to talk over anyway. That little dab of money I gave you yesterday, that's all you've got, ain't it? It'll be enough to get me to Carson City. I I'll find a job there. You know that a friend of your husband saw you in town? Yes, Paul Rogers. Well, I'll see you safely to the stage, but you mustn't stop in Carson City. Rogers or your husband would find you there in ten minutes. You must go all the way to St. Joe here. I couldn't accept this. It's just a loan. You can pay me back when you get it. Just send it to Hoss Cartwright, Ponderosa Ranch, Nevada. That's all the address you need. No, I, I really can't accept this. Don't argue with me, Lori. I get meaner than safe when people argue with me. You couldn't be mean, you wouldn't know how. You're so kind. I'd forgotten there were people in the world like you. I'll get the buggy. Mr. Cartwright. I'm Paul Rogers. Yes, I know. I'd like to talk to Laurie for a few moments. Well, I'm not at all sure that... It's all right, Hoss. Your husband wants to see you, Laurie. I don't want to see him. He's thought it over, Laurie. He's willing to give you a divorce. But he wants to hear you ask for it. No, I don't want to see him. Well, what's the harm? He just wants to say he's sorry and tell you goodbye. Do you see anything wrong with that, Mr. Contra? I see that as her decision, Mr. Rogers. Why didn't he come himself instead of sending you? You know why, Laurie? He's a proud man. And too proud to chase you and beg for a few words. He's willing to give you a divorce, but you have to come halfway. It's a wise thing to do, Laurie. If you get on the stage, You'll be waiting in Carson City when you get there. And no telling what he'll do or say then. I, I wouldn't go alone. I, I couldn't. Will you go with me? Certainly. Very good. It's not far from here, a side road, rough but passable. <laughs> to see me. My wife and I have a little talking to do. I'm sure you gentlemen will excuse us. Of course. If anything happens to her, she is his wife, Mr. Cartwright. Did you think I wouldn't follow you? find you wherever you went? Mm. 
Roger said that you'd give me a divorce. I told him to say that. I want you to go with me to Arizona, Texas, and Mexico. No, I won't go. You'll go. Now don't scream, Laurie. Or that big friend of yours will come charge into the rescue and I'll kill him before he gets through the door. That's a promise. You scream, I'll kill him. Understand? That's better. You're going to like Mexico. No, I won't go. You'll go. In a minute, you're going to walk out there and smile real pretty and tell your big friend that you're going to stay with your lawful husband. You're going to tell him that or he won't live to get back home. I won't go. I won't go with you. If you force me, I'll run away again. No, Laurie. You're not going to run away again, not ever. I won't go with you. I won't stay with you either. I'd rather die. <laughs> Big talk. I don't believe a word you say. It's true. I mean it. Go ahead, prove it. It's a gun. Pick it up. I won't stop you. Pick it up. Knock the hammer, pull the trigger. Go ahead. show you who's boss. I'm not gonna hurt you, Laurie. And you're not gonna make a sound. Telegrams for the last month on Kelly Adams. He was wanted for three murders and about a half a dozen bank robberies. Did you know about that? No. No, only that he was wanted. He was drinking one night and bragged about it. See, that's that's why I ran away. Oh, I doubt seriously if you got anything to worry about. But, but, but I I killed him. That's something I can't ever forget. But you've got to remember, your husband was wanted, dead or alive. He had two cash rewards out for him. And from what you tell me, he threatened Hoss Cartwright if you so much as called out for help at a time that he was hurting you. Now, what you did had to be in self-defense. That's what I've been telling her, Roy. Well, Joan, the deputy waiting outside. 
We better get on out that cabin. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take Laurie back to Ponderosa. All right. tired horse. We ran him all the way from town. He's going to have to have some rest. I should have told you who my husband was. I tried to, but I was too ashamed. Well, don't talk about it, Gloria. That is, unless you want to. Kelly could be very nice. I, I, I was clerking in the mercantile in Placerville. Bumped into each other one evening in the rain, and I got mud all over my dress. Next day, he bought me a new dress. Prettiest one I'd ever seen. How long ago was that? Four months. Cholera took Ma and Pa. I had no friends or kin in Placerville. Kelly would be waiting when I finished work. He took me into the jewelry store one evening and bought me that cameo. Well, it ain't been easy for you, has it? But you can start forgetting about it now. Eat him. Eat him. Horses are out front. I'll need uh, three or four minutes to write this note, and we can ride. Well, what do you think? Dark hair, no mustache. You'll get by. Especially when we get out of this part of the country. You'll need a new name. Got one picked out yet? No hurry, but I'm sure you'll think of one. Right. How about a drink for the road? Now, easy on that stuff, Kelly. You know how you get. What's this note you're writing? I told you for the sheriff. Now listen, Kelly. Now listen good. You're an old, old, old friend of mine. Understand? Yeah. I don't want you put away in Boot Hill. So I'm taking your body home for burial in the family plot. Comprende? Right. That's enough. Yeah, this plan of yours. Very good. That's very good. Only I'm going to change it some. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Laurie's going with me. Laurie's going with you. Oh. You take her. You even try and take her. And you've thrown away everything we've done. You see, she's my wife. A woman. No woman ever walked out on Kelly Adams, and she's not about to be the first. What about the Cartwrights, mister? Flesh and blood like the rest of us. They stop 45 slug, they'll die. One or all of them, they'll die. Thanks. You take Laura, you kill a Cartwright, and you start the biggest manhunt Nevada ever saw. You're right again, Rogers, only they won't be hunting me. I'm dead. Mrs. Duncan, I told him to meet me here. Kelly, you've got to listen to me. Lori gone. A cut right dead. The sheriff's going to turn over every rock in the country. He's going to wonder about that note. And everything we've done will be wasted. Go 
Go right ahead, Dunk. What are you doing, Duncan? You're the thinker. You make the plans. We do the work, take all the risks, and you get a third of the take. Only some of them plans were full of holes, like Red Hill. Two men were killed. Salty and Big Jack. That was sure somebody's fault. That was an accident. A mistake. Coal oil burns real well. Burn the cabin? Why? You made another mistake. Salty was a good friend. Rode with me for 10 years. Man's good friend gets killed. Somebody's got to pay. All right, Dunk, you can do the outside. Just a minute! You heard me, Dunk. Duncan! You listen! You listen to me. You need me. Every job I tell you how and when. Not anymore, Rogers. Gloria, I wish you'd change your mind. I can't see no reason in just rushing off. No, I can't stay. It's a big house. We've got lots of room. Besides that, Paul's going to be kind of angry with us if he finds out we let you get off without his saying hello. Besides that, you hang around long enough and you'll get to like this country. The mountains and the streams and the lakes. And... Can't you see? So many terrible things have happened here. I, I want to go back to St. Joe. Yes, ma'am. Well, uh, there'll be an inquest and statements to make, possibly both. As soon as the sheriff says it's all right, I'll put you on the first stage. <laughs> oh, now, don't cry. Please don't cry. Here. Thank you. like Mr. Rogers didn't want his friend buried in a criminal's grave, so he just set fire to cabin and skedaddled. No use of chasing him, no. He wasn't wanted. Yeah. I know that Laura's husband was wearing this belt buffer when he came out on the porch. I don't know about that other stuff. Well, this watch has his name inside the case. And the ring has got both his and her initials in it. Oh, say, I would like for her to see these things. Well, Roy... She's kind of shook up right at the moment. It'd be a kindness if you'd wait a while and let her sort of gather herself up. Oh, I can take care of that, all right. The coroner's down with some kind of a fever. It'll take me three, four days before he's up and around again, so I'll tell you what. I'll get word to you just as soon as we wander in town. Wait, 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 Run all that by once again at a trot and in English. Listen, Lolly, she gone. Humsey fixed a train. She Nobody home. Where? How oh, I know. She says she want to go back to St. Joe. Wait, 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 wait. When she leave? I don't know. I don't know. I'm sick, busy in the kitchen. I make a cousin, fix tea, fix a tray. He go, she go, everybody go, nobody home again. All work, all day, no play. my good and faithful wife.
disappoint me. I come back from the grave. I figure the least you can do is give me a big kiss of welcome. Don't touch me. Coming. You tried to kill me. Look at Sarah. Oh, Roger's clothes. You're wearing his clothes. You killed him. Never mind about Rogers. What you got to remember is that Kelly Adams is dead and buried. My name is Winters. Henry Winters. We're going to get on that stage, man and wife. We're going to Carson, then Texas, and Mexico. No, I won't go with you. You can't make me go with you. There's a rider coming, somebody from the Ponderosa. Yeah, somebody's coming. After the buggy or you? It better be for the buggy. It's your big friend. Looks like he just ran out of luck. You aren't going to kill him just because he's been good to me. Well, maybe not. If we can strike a bargain, you and me, two things you got to do. Get rid of him. I don't care how you do it. Just send him away. All right, I'll do my best. And you got to give me your word of honor. We go all the way to Mexico. Man and wife. No trouble. All right, all right, I promise. All right. <laughs> Oh. Right now, I want you here. If he even sounds like he suspects something, yank the door open and get out of the way. I'll be sitting waiting. sore at me. For boring the buggy? Why should I be? Not just the buggy. For leaving without a thank you or goodbye. You see, Hoss, I was scared. I trusted you, but I didn't trust the sheriff. I knew that it was time for me to go. Yeah. Yeah, I know that feeling. I sometimes can't hardly wait to get on my way myself. You've been so good for me, and I do thank you for it. I... I'm sorry that you had to come after the buggy. But you don't have to wait around till the stage gets here. Oh, ma'am. I'll be much obliged. I, I know it sounds ungrateful, but I'd rather you didn't stay. I'd like to be alone. Yes, ma'am. I know that feeling, too. Well... I must have dropped my purse. Yeah. Is, uh, is everything all right? Yes. Please go, Hoss. Please go. Well, I reckon there's nothing left, but goodbye. Ha, ha, ha.
I swear that all the facts and statements contained in this deposition, which you have signed, are true, so help you God? I do. Well, that does it. You're free to go, and I wish you a lot of luck. Thank you, sir. Free to go. You don't know how wonderful that sounds. Yeah, I think I do, Miss Laurie. St. Joe and old friends and family, a new start. But, you know, you can have that new start right here. If you want to, and I'll help you. I would, Horace, if I had your courage. Oh, you got plenty of your own. Risk your life to save mine out there at the way station. I don't know many folks have done that. But I reckon you'd have, you'd have done that for anybody, wouldn't you? Oh, no, not for anybody. Just somebody is dear and kind as you are. But so much has happened. I just have to have a chance to get away and think. You do understand, don't you, Hoss? Yes, I'm right. I'm right I'll write to you, I promise. You write to me. 